In this video series, we've built a Kubernetes cluster out of Raspberry Pis. We've added the ability to automatically procure TLS certificates for our deployments, and we've installed our own Docker registry to store our custom images. Now it's time to actually build and deploy those custom images. In this video, we'll learn how to build our own images from the convenience of our development PC, and then deploy them on our cluster. In the process, we'll learn some common development and deployment workflows by actually doing them. There's a lot to do in this one, so let's get started. To follow along with this video, you will need your running K3S cluster, a working Docker registry, and of course Docker installed on your development PC. As always, any files used in this video can be downloaded by following the links in the video description. So why would we want to build custom images? Well, there are several scenarios where this would be useful. One common one would be adding custom content to an existing image or service. An example of this would be adding static HTML content to an Nginx HTTP server and deploying that as a custom image. The content could be some static HTML and CSS for a static website, or it could be something like a single page React application. The resulting combination would be a deployable dedicated web server with custom content. Another scenario might be deploying a completely custom application. An example of that might be deploying a custom backend API service that you've built on top of Node or Python or Ruby or something like that. A third scenario might be just building a common image for the ARM platform because no one else has made it available. Deploying on an ARM platform like the Pi presents a few extra challenges for us to overcome. The first is that most Docker images are built for the AMD64 platform. The situation today is better than it was a few years ago, but the amount of pre-built ARM images is still small. Let's see how small. If we go to Docker Hub and look at the available images, we can see there are over 3 million available. If we limit this to just the ARM architecture, we can see there are only about 32,000 images. So that's like what, two orders of magnitude lower. This greatly increases our chance of needing to build a custom ARM image for some service that we want to use at some point. Another challenge is building the images themselves. Most home PCs I've seen are also AMD 64 based. By default, if we build an image on our PC, it's only going to run on an AMD 64 architecture. So what do we do? Well, there are two workarounds that come to mind. First, we could just natively build our image on a Pi. This is fairly straightforward. We just set up a Pi for development use. We put Docker on it. We copy our code over. We build it with Docker and push to our registry. In my experience, though, this tends to be a little bit slow. Also, it's a bit of a pain developing on a PC and having to sync everything to a Pi to build the images. It does work, however, and it's completely valid if you want to do it that way. Another option is to build directly on our PC using an ARM emulator. That's what we're going to focus on in this video. To build our images on our PC, we're going to use the QEMU emulator. Let's go ahead and install it on our development PC. Okay, great. Previously, we talked about three major reasons to build our own images. We're going to deep dive into the first scenario in this video, adding content to an existing image. The first step, obviously, would be to create some content. So let's say a React client application we wanted to deploy. Now, I've pre-created such an application that we can use for demonstration purposes. It's a super novel strategy game in which two players try to be the first to line up four game pieces in a row on a grid. I can't believe no one has thought of this before. So let's first make a directory to do our custom work in. Now let's clone the pre-made application. And we'll select version 1.0.0 as the code we want to deploy by doing a git checkout of version 1.0.0. Since this is a React application, we need a Node.js environment in which to build it. Since I'm not trying to teach you JavaScript development, I've set up a build system in Docker that we can use to build the application. That way, we don't need to set up our development box for JavaScript development. Now, obviously, if you were generating your own content, you would develop it in whatever environment you saw fit. 
So these next steps are for building the application and have no bearing on our cluster at all. The first command builds an image named 4-builder using the Dockerfile build Dockerfile. This builds an image that has node in it and can build our application. The next command runs the image as our user, mapping our current working directory to the path slash app in the Docker container, which is where the image expects the code to build to live. Image then installs packages and builds the React application with the output being magically deposited in our local build directory. Again, all of that is to save us from having to set up for building JavaScript. Okay, when it is finished running, if we inspect the build directory, we can see our application code. You can see there's an index.html, some JavaScript files, etc. Now that the application is built, we can work on building it into an image that we can deploy. I've pre-created the Docker file, but let's take a look at it. Now, I, I named it dockerfile.deploy to separate it from the one we were used for building. So taking a look at this file, the first line specifies the base image to use. In this case, we're using the ARM version of Nginx. The second line is the magical line. It copies the QEMU emulator into the image itself. This provides us two benefits. First, it allows us to use the run commands inside the Docker file to perform operations on an ARM image. We are not doing that in this Docker file, but we will later. Second, once the image is built, this will allow us to run the ARM image on our AMD PC for testing purposes. The third line copies our built application code to Nginx directory for serving HTML. And really, that's all there is to it. So Docker doesn't allow us to access files outside our working directory when building images, so we need to copy that QEMU binary into our working directory before we build the image. Now let's use this Docker file to build our custom Nginx image. Remember, when we name our image, we need to prefix it with our Docker registry name so it will go to the correct place when we push it. Also, we tag the image with the version number, version 1.0.0. We'll see why that's a good idea in just a bit. Before pushing, let's test our image locally. It's an ARM image, but the emulator will allow us to test it on our PC. Now you may see some errors about things not being implemented. This is because the emulator doesn't emulate everything that one can do in the ARM architecture. So far, this hasn't caused me any issues other than these annoying messages. Okay, so we mapped local port 3000 to image port 80. So we should be able to visit localhost 3000 in our browser to try out the image. Okay, it looks like our app is working locally. Sweet. And we can just press control C in the terminal to stop the image. Let's push the image to our repository. Let's log in first, just in case. In my case, I was already logged in. and didn't have to type my credentials again, but if you've lost your credential file or whatever, you might have to do that. After that, we just push the image up to our repository like any other image. So now we're ready to make the Kubernetes configuration files. Since it's mostly boilerplate, we'll cheat and copy the file we use for our k3scarpy.net site. So we'll just search and replace my site with four. And then let's look over this. The names and labels look good. We'll call the container 
4-nginx. Obviously, the image needs to be the custom image that we just pushed. And we don't need these volumes, so let's remove that. The service looks good. So we have a couple of options for ingress. We could deploy this on k3scarpy.net and just set this path to four. That would work. We could also deploy on a new host, say four.carpy.net and get a new TLS certificate and all that. I think for this app, we'll just deploy it on the new path and on k3s.carpy.net. We could specify the ingress here and that would work, but generally speaking, I don't like having multiple ingress records for the same site. So let's remove it from here and we'll update the mysite.yaml uh, to add the path for this service later. Now, if we were to deploy this as is, it would fail trying to get the image. And that's because we have authentication set up on our Docker registry. So we have to tell Kubernetes how to authenticate. We can do that by adding a Docker registry secret with our authentication credentials. Now I'm gonna give you a bonus bash tip here. So we're gonna run a command that will have our authentication password on the command line. We don't want this in our bash history. But in bash, if you start a command with a space, it won't be saved in history. So let's make use of that here. This verbose command creates a Kubernetes secret of type Docker registry named regcred. It's intended for our registry with our registry's username and password. Now, if we dump the last three history commands, you can see there is no clear text password leaking in our history file. Just a little bonus tip there. Now that we have our secret, we need to tell Kubernetes to use that in our 4.yaml file. To do that, we simply add an image pull secrets entry at the same level as containers in our YAML file that calls out our secret. Now we're ready to deploy our application. I'm sure you know how to do that by now. Okay, we'll give that some time to spin up and then check that it is running. And great, it's running. Now remember, we didn't specify an ingress, so we can't easily check this out just yet. We want this service to be part of the k3s carpy.net site. So let's add it in the ingress section of our previous mysite.yaml. We'll just make a copy of our existing path and paste the new one underneath it. We'll set this path to four. The service name to 4-nginx-service and leave the service port at 80. One other thing here, when we developed our four application, it didn't know that it was going to be deployed as a subpath of a site. So let's tell traffic to strip the leading slash four off when passing traffic along to this application. We can do that by adding the traffic front end rule type of path prefix strip to the annotation section. Now we just have to reapply the MySite YAML configuration. Kubernetes tells us that the ingress has been updated, so let's try that out. We can now go to k3scarpy.net 4 in our browser to see the application. And there's version 100 of our application. Our application deploy is complete. Okay, so our highly unique application gets out there. It goes viral, and now we have 30 million players playing the game against themselves. But half of them are on social media griping that it's ugly. So we hack on some CSS, and we need to quickly rush out version 1.1.0. We're going to simulate our application development by simply checking out version 1.1.0 from the repo. 
Now all we have to do is just repeat our build and deploy steps from before. This will build version 1.1.0 of our application. And now we can build a new image with a new version label and then push that up to our repository. Okay, now we just edit our YAML file to use the new version. And redeploy. Try that out by going back to the site. Now we can see that it's still at version 1.0.0. This is probably because our browser has it cached. So if we clear the cache, we're doing a hard reload. Control Shift R. There we go. Version 1.1.0. It looks much nicer. So here's another bonus tip for you. Let's say our 30 million game players love the new game. There's this critical bug that crashes right before a player wins. We're in a panic. We need to roll this thing back right now. In that case, you can quickly live edit the deployment. This brings up Kubernetes view of the deployment YAML. We simply go down to the container's image line. We edit the version 110 back to 100 and save the file. When we save the file, Kubernetes will immediately redeploy our pod with version 100. If we now hard reload our site, we see it's back to 100. Crises averted. Now we don't really have a bug in version 110, so let's put it back. We can do that with a live edit again or we can just redeploy our YAML file. So that's it for scenario one. We can update site data or code at will and deploy new version numbers whenever we like. Because we tagged our images with version numbers, we can easily roll back to any version. Nice. If you want to clean up this sample, just invoke the delete command on the YAML file and that will clean everything up. In the next video, we'll dive into scenario two, which is building custom images from scratch. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and would like to see more, please consider subscribing to my channel.